quite an intro. I don't know how I got that. Thank you, Cash. Hi. Yes. My name is Doug Plummer, and I have the great privilege of being the mayor of the tiny village of Sharon Springs, New York. Population 547-ish. Um, I like to think of them as my subjects. My husband, Garth, and I bought our first home in Sharon Springs in 1990. We were looking for a weekend home away from our full-time residence in New York City. We loved New York, but it really wasn't quite right. So we thought maybe the, the country would be a better fit. So we borrowed a friend's car and headed up to see a house that was listed in the New York Times for $22,500. It was 1990. It hasn't changed much in Sharon Springs, but it, it, it's just... So, we came up to Sharon Springs and, and, um, to see this house, and that's when we were introduced to this almost abandoned village, a place that would actually come to change the direction of our entire lives. So we bought the farm, and most of the neighbors thought it should have been demolished, and it probably should have, but we didn't know that, and we loved it. It was our first home. And as my father said, I didn't think you knew that which end of the hammer to hold. But thanks to a series of Time Life books, I learned. <laughs> they really do have them because, of course, this is before the internet. So, a brief, brief history of Sharon Springs. Now, can I just say that doing a brief history of Sharon Springs is uh, doing a complete injustice to my wonderful little village because it has this amazing, rich history, but we would be here for days. So, so fun fact to know in trade, there are 40 villages in upstate New York that exist because of their mineral springs. However, very few of them have any of their spa culture left. So, Sharon Springs used to welcome thousands and thousands of visitors to come to our famous mineral springs. The rich, the famous, the powerful came from all over the world to take the waters, but also because of the famous, uh, wonderful society they found here. They came to places like the Pavilion Hotel, which had over 350 guest rooms. It was referred to as the American Ritz. At one point, Sharon Springs claimed over 60 hotels and rooming houses, four bathhouses, and one summer over 10,000 sulfur baths. We then went on to, um, we also had 100 years, sorry, we had 100 years of a very, very thriving Jewish community that uh, started off with being uh, secular, wealthy New York City Jews, and then after the Second World War, it became more um, Hasidic and Orthodox Jews who were fleeing uh, war-torn Europe and emigrated to the United States, many of them Holocaust survivors, and were actually paid to come to Sharon Springs through war reparation vouchers paid for by the German government. After that, we had an influx of Russian Jews, and then in the 1990s, the beginning of a thriving LGBT community. We also have, we have, well, we have four important springs. The Eyewater Spring. This is the reason Sharon Springs got discovered. The Native Americans brought the early Palatine Germans to wash their eyes in this spring for eye ailments. We have something called a Calibiate Spring, or an Iron Spring, which was used to treat anemia. There is the Magnesium Spring, which is a potent laxative. Still to this day, so just be careful. <laughs> we use it as punishment every now and again. <laughs> um, and then we have our historic Sulfur Spring. Now, the Sulfur Spring was said to uh, cure all sorts of things that really didn't, don't bother us today, but were quite problematic for the people in the 19th century, like strange skin diseases, something called catarrh, or, or, or digestive things, or tapeworms, and all sorts of creepy things like that. So this is a picture of the, uh, one of the bathhouses, and you would go in, and you, of course, would have your own cubicle, and you would take a sulfur bath for only 20 minutes, because after 20 minutes, it starts to eat off your skin. I'm not kidding. And um, which, if you have eczema or seborrhea or psoriasis, that's a good thing. So you could also come and get things like mud baths. They imported the special mud from Piestjene, Poland. And, well, <laughs> you could take a, a sulfur bath. So Sharon Springs was this incredibly thriving, busy, successful community. So what happened? This is that same bathhouse decades later. It's still kind of cool, but also very creepy. Um, a lot of things contributed to the decline of the baths. Things like uh, the, the society moved on. Society people went to Saratoga Springs for the racetrack, or they went to, to Newport, Rhode Island. 
Um, the discovery of antibiotics, so that sulfur drugs and sulfur baths were not the only way to treat uh, a bacterial infection. Baths were no longer in fashion themselves. The automobile, people could go fa fa further, faster, farther. Um, and the opening of the New York State Thruway. So, fast forward to 1990. Uh, we were in the car with our mildly creepy realtor, um, and we, he pulls up in front of the very dilapidated, abandoned American hotel, circa 1846, with its collapsing porches and broken windows and grapevines growing all over it, and we loved it. It was just love at first sight. Now, the strange thing about that is we knew nothing about the community. I didn't even know where we are. My husband's from central New York. Frankly, I thought they ate their young up here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we had not seen the house that we would come to buy either. And, and most days I have trouble deciding what I want for breakfast. So the fact that I had this visceral response to this building and that I knew I would own it was kind of strange. But I loved her. We actually used to, on, on snowy days, I would come up and we would sit and stare at it and think what must it have been like with 26 guest rooms full of people. And I would take a coin out of my pocket and I would wish on it and throw it up onto the second floor porch. That, my, my wish was always, you have to show me how to help you. I kind of thought I would get beamed lotto numbers. <laughs> Instead, it just made our first business, which was a bakery and a cafe, successful. It made us realize that we love this community and we loved hospitality. So six years later, when in a much more decrepit state, with the roof collapsing in, the back has fallen off, for $18,000, we purchased the American Hotel. And after five years and $500,000 later, she reopened her doors on May 23rd. Yes, she deserves it. Um, to a 60-seat restaurant, nine guest rooms, and a pub. And um, she sure did clean up well. So, um, now I wish I could stand here and say that we had this grand plan of how we were going to fix this village. Um, we didn't. And, and quite frankly, I don't think we still do. We just knew that we had to do all we could to save these amazing structures and, and help preserve this incredible history of this wacky, quirky village. So, and we've been actually had a, a, great, a great deal of success. These are just some of the before and after pictures that I'll just zip through. Uh, before and after, before, that's my house, and after. Oh, this is a picture that was supposed to be in earlier. That's us with our first house. Um, before and after. <laughs> it's just sad what 25 years will do. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, now, this was the first building that was restored in the Lower Village, and these brave folks took what was a cobbler shop and a milliner's shop and restored it. They were really spurred the, the, the growth of the Lower Spa area and after, and it's still a thriving shop today, Cobbler and Company. Before and after is the Black Cat Cafe. Our Village Hall then became the Village Hall Gallery, and finally, Beekman 1802. Uh, so, ingredients. You have to have a willing community. Or not. We never really asked. We just started buying things and fixing them. Um, a community like a recipe is, is varied, um, up to personal taste, trial and error, and depends on the quality of your ingredients. Um, utilize your leftovers. And boy, did Sharon Springs have leftovers. And actually, that became something that worked in our favor because there were so many buildings that we could work with. And they were cheap. Um, quality ingredients. When the National Register placed the entire village of Sharon Springs uh, as an historic zone, um, well, with over 170 structures, they used the word unique in their narrative. Now, anybody who has anything to do with historic preservation knows that that is not a word that is used very often. And it goes to show that even the National Trust thought that Sharon Springs was special. Blind faith. We had no idea what we were doing. And we just, like, let's just do it. We just knew we had to do as much as we could to save as much as we could. Combine your ingredients. Need. We, we got everybody to work together. And by doing so, we were able to restore, kind of reinstill a sense of community pride. We became the little village that could. And this was also helped along greatly by, and this came out right when we just happened to open the American Hotel, 
an amazing New York Times article with the incredible headline that said, a, a faded resort lumbers to life. Just love that word, because that's, it, it, we really were plodding, but it lumbers to life. Work, and work we did, and work we continue to do. Um, with the village coffers having almost no money in them, we had to become really industrious, which means we did a lot of the work ourselves. Then we started to coerce our New York City friends to come up and buy houses of their own. And as a realtor friend of ours said once, she said, well, if you don't like your neighbors, find new ones. And it wasn't that we didn't like our neighbors, there just weren't many of them. And create. Uh, we were able to um, kind of put back together the Sharon Springs Cha uh, Chamber of Commerce. We were able to create the Citizens Council for the Arts. In turn, the Citizens Council for the Arts went to the county, got them to donate a piece of property on Main Street, which is now our Calibiate Spring Park. Uh, the, the village now hosts three very successful yearly um, festivals. Uh, the festivals bring in thousands and thousands of people. We have a free summer concert series in the park. We now have free Shakespeare in the park. Last year, we had our first uh, Sharon Springs Poetry Festival, which brought in poet, poets laureate, poet laureates, Poets Laureate, um, and, um, and Pulitzer Prize winners to do performances in the community and to work with the kids in the high school and introduce them to really incredible poetry. And this year we will also be having our uh, f fifth annual um, fundraising run, Run for the Hills for First Responders, which last year raised $30,000 for local first responding units. Let simmer. Like for 25 years, it's been simmering. But historic preservation isn't fast, and a lot of times it isn't pretty, but my goodness, it's rewarding. It gets me a little choked up. Um, add infrastructure. Infrastructure is like baking. If, if you don't have your salt and water and flour and yeast, you can't bake. Well, the same thing goes for your community. If you don't have the building blocks, meaning your infrastructure, you can't go anywhere. Now, nobody likes to talk about infrastructure. It isn't pretty, it isn't fun, until it doesn't work, which is the case with almost every community in upstate New York. So currently, we are doing a lot of work. I have become that person that doesn't get invited to parties anymore because all I do is talk about sewer funding. It's really sad. <laughs> Economic development. Again, a phrase I just detest. Um, everyone uses it. it. It's such a catchphrase, and it's so much easier said than done. Um, but that said, we have been able to attract a South Korean investor who is investing $10 million into our, our historic imperial baths. Uh, they intend to open their Asian, international Asian health spa this coming winter, my mouth to God's ears. And also, um, they, they anticipate 100,000 visitors. So things could be very, very different. You should buy your property now. Um, just saying, it's a good investment. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a realtor on the fourth row, and uh, <laughs> she has cards. Um, so so it's, it's really, really important. Um, and we also have our good, good friends, Josh and Brent, AKA the fabulous Beekman boys and their incredible company, Beekman 1802. In 2007, when the guys discovered Sharon Springs, we became fast friends and an empire was born with their farm and their mercantile and their now their shipping uh, facility. We're really excited about a, a future of collaboration with Beekman 1802, the village of Sharon Springs, um, the incredible widespread community that they have created of their fans because of their television show. And, um, and the incredible number of jobs that they're bringing to the village. Bake over very low flame. Sharon Springs has a terrible history with fire. <laughs> Commitment. Well, that stands to reason that, of course, you've got to be committed to making your community the very best it can be. A community like your recipe depends on how hard you work at it and the quality of the ingredients, and that's exactly the same as your community. So tomorrow's menu, how are we getting ready for the, the 21st century? Well, I think we always have been. Um, by, by protecting our history, but adding to it um, the, the, the networking and the technology of the 21st century. Um, 
So we're, what are we doing? We're, we're hoping to bring broadband into the village. We're introducing electric vehicle charging stations. We're going to be putting um, uh, solar panels on our Department of Public Works building and, and on our water treatment facilities. So reducing our, our um, need on the grid and showing that we're a sustainable community. So what I love about central New York, or, or small town America for that matter, is the unbridled sense of possibility. It's like seeing a new empty dumpster. You know, it just means you can get rid of so much stuff. I never thought I'd be excited about an empty dumpster. But, so, when I had the great good fortune of being elected mayor of this village that I just love so much, I told my incredible board, and forgive me because it is a terribly overused, cliched refrigerator magnet slogan, but I said, you know, if we can dream it, we can achieve it. And here's the real quote. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can become it. And, and I believe that from the bottom of my heart. So go out and help an old building. Help out in your community. Pick up a broom or a rake or a hammer. And because it's our history, it's, it's our legacy, and it's up to us to save it. Thank you so much.